Best I am under $250. I feel like this is a very appropriate video uh, to follow up the last video that I did on the uh, Full Performer 5. If you haven't watched that review yet, go check it out. It's uh, definitely worth the watch. So yes, today we're gonna talk about 10 of the best IEMs you can grab if you have $250. Let's jump into it. Hey friends, welcome back to another video on Giz Audio. Today we have actually just nine IEMs to talk about. I know the title says 10 and I told you guys 10, but I really only have nine really good ones and I don't wanna throw just a random 10 in there just to make the list actually 10. Now, these are not in order of performance. These are in order of what I'd rather grab over another. So the number eight spot is gonna be an IEM that I would personally rather grab to listen to over the number nine spot and so on and so forth. Performance wise, I would say most of them perform similar. You can check out my ranking list if you wanna see the full performance breakdown and see where they all ranked. Now, before we begin the list, there is a very generous giveaway by Hi-Fi Go, the Yume 2. Yes, you can enter the giveaway in the description below. Win yourself a Yume 2 this Thanksgiving. Thank you, Hi-Fi Go. All information, are below. Now let's finally jump into the list. Starting with number nine, we have the Tang Su Seishun Wu. Planar IM, $150. The pros of this one is that it is tuned well. It's smooth, it has a lot of bass. The bass control is rather well done for the amount of bass that it has. The upper mid range is tuned really nicely. Now the con of this one, and one of the main reasons I don't really grab this personally, is that it doesn't have the best details. The note definition especially is not the most distinct, especially when you think of planar drivers. This one comes across slightly bit on the blunt side in comparison to everything else on this list. Next we have Moondrops Kado, $190 single dynamic driver IEM. The pros of this one is that it's tuned rather smooth, it's easy to listen to, it's warm, so male vocals sound lush and hefty. The upper mid range is done nicely, female vocals sound lively. Now some of the cons that it has has to to do with the treble area. The treble area on the Kado is a little bit too tamed and not the most even feeling for me. And the other issue, and it's more of a personal issue, is that it's a little bit too warm for me. I want it to be cleaner in the lower mids for my own personal taste. So Kado, number eight for me. Number seven spot, we have Rap Goes Hook X. Now this is the original edition. I know there's an HBB edition. I have not tried that one yet, so don't ask me in the comment section. But yes, the original, this one is smooth, is warm, tuned well, and also has quite nice details as well. Now the con that it has is similar to the Kato's con is that it is a little bit too warm for my personal taste. If you like warm IEM, you're gonna like the Hook X much more than I do, but I want a cleaner lower mids and the Hook X doesn't really give that to me. But you know which IEMs do give me a clean mid range that I want? The Dunu Talos. Now the Talos from base to lower mid range is tuned really well. It's bass shy, yes, so bass lovers are not gonna like this IEM, but for me, it's clean, it's open. The upper mid range is a little bit on the tame side, so vocals are not as live as they could be and this is actually one of the con that puts it at the number seven on this list is that I want my vocals to be more lively and on a Talos they're just a little bit too in the background if you will too relax. Running up the list now, we have the number six spot, the Yume Midnight. Now we're getting to some of the stuff I really, really love and some of the stuff I grab personally from time to time. The Yume Midnight has a beautiful mid-range. Vocals are distinct and natural. The timbre quality of the Midnight is solid. It has some issues in the treble, so vocals can sometimes come across a little bit fatiguing. That's really one of the biggest con of the Midnight for me. The sub bass is another area where I feel like that needs to be toned down to give more definition to the mid bass. But all that aside, the Midnight is still a solid IM that I personally grab every now and then. I just realized that I messed up uh, most of the numbers throughout the entirety of this video. This is actually number four. The previous one was number five and so on and so forth. Mistakes happen. I am only human. But you know what's not human and still makes mistakes? <laughs> the seven hertz. Timeless. I don't know what kind of joke that was. Number four spot, Seven Hertz Timeless has a lot going for it. At $200, it is probably the most resolving IEM within the price bracket, mainly for its note definition. Each hits and each notes come across 
very distinct, more so on the timeless than anything else in this video. The only issue it has is going to be in the treble area. There's a big peak there that kind of makes the timbre of instruments and vocals not the most natural they can be. And while some people don't really mind that timbre quality, for some, like myself, it gets fatiguing after a while. Now, you guys might be wondering, Timmy, what about the 7 Hz Timeless AE? That version is better than the original Timeless, but it is $260. Why? Why is it $260? Same driver, same everything. The only difference is cable. Now we're on to top three. And at number three spot, we have another C Audio, the Yume 2. Yes, although I do prefer the mid-range of the Midnight more, I prefer everything else of the Yume 2 more. The bass is not as mushy sounding as on the Midnight, and also the treble is less peaky as well. So the timbre qualities of the Yume 2 is better than the Midnight. Now, the Yume 2 does have its own cons as well, is that the mid-range is not the most natural sounding mid-range out there. It's more of a V-shaped style mid-range, so vocals can come across a little bit thin. So yeah, if you want something more neutral, the Midnight is still the better option over the two. Just me personally, I like the two more. Next, we have the number two spot, and there are three IMs that occupy this spot, and you may be wondering, why three IMs? Well, let me tell you, S12, C12, S12 Pro. Basically, all the same things with differences in bass level. Now, the S12 to me sounds very special. I love the tuning on it. The amount of perceived air that you get with the S12, though, unnatural for sure, is very fun and just unique, different to listen to. It's a lot of trouble, yes, but somehow it doesn't come across peaky or fatiguing to my ears. I can listen to the S12 for a very, very long time. So yeah, it's just one of those IEMs that I just really love and I grab the S12 all the time. It lives on my table with me. If you're a fan of this channel for a while, you've heard that statement many times. It's true. It lives on my table and I grab it pretty often. Now the cons, because there's always a con, right? The treble will be too much for some. It's not fatiguing to me, but some people have said that it is fatiguing to them. Also, it's not the most natural sounding IEM out there as well. So if you're looking for a neutral, natural, beautiful, realistic uh, tuning, the S12 is not quite that. I would say the S12 is more of a V-shaped IEM, very fun, but done in a way that is super tasteful and again, somewhat unique. And now we have the number one spot and it's none other than Performer 5 by Awful. 